course, the funny thing is to say, well, what we're going to do is you want to move your hand over here so it's in our field of view. And, and that's the whole idea is moving around so we can get a really good image and not off peripherally. But, you know, if your joint zeros are so far off, you can say, all right, put your hand, you know, in front of your eyes and you imagine like, put it here, you can see it. And you tell us to do it and it goes back like this. You're like, <laughs> yeah. where the heck's the hand? Because, you know, your offsets down here and the shoulder joints could be just so far off. Uh, of course, you were talking about now, let's, let's get into the nitty and gritty here. Um, we talk about this video. I'm going to pull it up here. Maybe we can just talk over it a little bit. So, yeah, so there's nothing to really talk over because it's, it's just <laughs> what you see down there. It's basically three parts. The first is self-calibration. So if, just pause for a second to, so I can yep. explain what mm -hmm. that is. Uh, some people might be familiar with the term proprioception. Uh, that's basically sort of you, your body's sense of awareness and where it is. So that you mm -hmm. can close your eyes and move your arms around and you kind of have an idea where they are mm -hmm. in space. And you, know, you can do things like touch your nose with your, your eyes closed and everything else. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if yeah. you're lucky, where your eyes closed, maybe even get the fingers to touch. Uh, they come kind of mm -hmm. close and then I can kind of recalibrate to get that. And yeah. industrial robots have this thing, but they don't call it proprioception. They call it inverse and forward kinematics. So basically it means if you know the angles of the joints of your arm, you can calculate the Cartesian position. And vice versa, if you have a desired Cartesian position you need to go to, you can mm -hmm. calculate the angles that you need and then just plug that into your control system to help move to those angles and boom, your tool will be exactly where you want it to be. But in order for that to happen, you need to make sure you're properly calibrated. And typically what that means is that when you make anything, there's always manufacturing errors and, and everything else that goes on. A lot of those you have kind of under control. So hopefully the links of your arms and all those are exactly what you want those links to be. And then when you connect something together, hopefully it connects together the way you want to not at some strange angle. But the main thing mm -hmm. is you get these, um, these, these actuators or, or motors that are spinning these joints around. And when you connect them in there, you don't know what the reference zero is. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so what is the actual datum? So, so what are the values of my encoders where my arm is aligned in a particular way mm -hmm. that we agree that that encoder value means zero? And mm -hmm. um, the what's usually known as the the joint zero positions is the largest source of error in any sort of robot. It's like easily eighty percent of the error. So that's the okay. one everyone goes after. And once you get that, the rest of them are kind of minor, and you can chase them if you want to. So when they build it, and the question is, is this like a one-time calibration they have to do when the robot is first assembled, or does it start to drift and change after a while? Because normally, when an industrial robot is built. They put it out and they have this very ex expensive setups to measure the positions of the arms to create the signature file that then goes to the robot. And in theory, you would never have to do that again, unless, of course, the robot needs to have maintenance or it's been hit or something like that. And then you may have to go and do a, a new calibration. So it may be that they figured out it was so darn easy to do with the built-in cameras and Optimus that they can go ahead and do it and then recalibrate it every now and then. Because there's going to be a certain amount of maintenance, I'm sure, that happens with this over time. That's like, oh, we need to go in and, and you know, change out the, the hand for some reason. And rather than having to take it back to the factory, it'd be nice to be able to do it there. And there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to do it. The, it, it you used to need very complicated setups to get the measurement you need. But now camera technology and yeah, the software behind it is so good, you can do it. And, you know, the other way to look at this calibration is anyone that has a Tesla and then they want to use FSD, usually the first thing you have to do is calibrate the cameras. So yep. you drive for a little bit and it tries to figure out where the cameras are and you should never have to do it again. But sometimes you do when the next software update comes up, they say, oh, please recalibrate the cameras. Or if over time things get kind of weird, like, oh, it's not following the lanes quite right. It might need a new camera calibrations because the cameras may have shifted or moved in their housings or you know, if, you, if someone bumped into you, obviously that's going to mess yeah. it up or if they had to replace a camera. So those are the reasons you need to go out and kind of do this calibration. So your ideal model and your real model kind of uh, in the real world model match very well. And the robot knows where it's going with pretty good accuracy. The other reason you want to do it is you would like to make sure every single optimist is in agreement. So if, if you have an optimist, which has been trained to do a particular task and you want another one to do it, you should just be able to have them both do it with the same precision. But if their mm -hmm. outputs are a little bit different the way they've been trained, then the results could be that different optimi are going to behave different. So it's, it's, it's basically the way to make sure that they're uniform. And as you see, the way they do that is they track a lot of positions. They they look for some mm -hmm. landmarks. So the camera system is going out there. It's very much like, you know, you're... Your, your, your camera is really pretty good at identifying a face or something like that, or maybe even mm -hmm. a person's eyes to know to, to get rid of the red eye. So it's, it's because it's looking for certain landmark features. 
and now is looking for those landmark features is able to identify where it knows it's supposed to be on the real optimus and then say aha um based on these joint angles it should be at this position in space mm -hmm. and then based on what the cameras are seeing it might say oh you're off a little bit here and it gets enough of that data and it can crunch on it and basically uh go through and do some fitting to find out what are the right encoder position offsets to minimize that error to get it down to mm -hmm. you know millimeter or sub millimeter and it depend, depends on how accurate that that reading is going to be but it's going to be the error order of about a millimeter probably and that'll be good yeah. enough yeah and also what what you notice is that the movement see, of course is a is a program that like a like a adjustment yeah. movement yeah. a special one yes, that yes, you yes. always know when when that's off because they have it digitally or or virtually mm -hmm. they know mm -hmm. that okay this has to be the position of the hand and if that's off with the measurements now with the camera yep. they know okay they have to move it up a bit uh, or here's the position and they have to then they can adjust those encoders uh, um, controlling right. the right. the hand and, movement for example and, yeah and usually you you will have the robot go through a certain sequence of exercises that are well yeah. known to get you what you want part of it is that you you don't want to be too methodical about it the idea, mm -hmm. I, actually you want to be a little bit random about where those positions are uh, to get rid of any sort of biases but you could have something like that of course, the funny thing is to say, well, what we want to do is you want to move your hand over here so it's in our field of view. And, and that's the whole idea is move it around so we can get a really good image and not off peripherally. But, you know, if your joint zeros are so far off, you can say, all right, put your hand, you know, in front of your eyes and you imagine like, put it here, you can see it. And you tell us to do it and it goes back like this. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. where the heck's the hand? Because, you know, your offsets down and here in the shoulder joints could be just so far off. So mm -hmm. it, it would be kind of humorous to see if they kind of go around and begin to realize, man, that's a really bad offset and we've got to correct mm. that. But I have a feeling the model is sort of close to where it's going to be. It's just that you want to refine it. So hopefully it's only off by a couple of centimeters, and not off by a meter. <laughs> Yeah, and and uh, also what I found very interesting, the um, if you look at the footage of the Tesla bot that uh, was published before this video, um, we had this uh, field test or or test um, here that you can see. Here's the virtual mm -hmm. Tesla bot on the on the right here, and yep. they have this this VR suit um, to or AR suit or, or how you call it and um, yeah to to control the robot and I found that very interesting those uh, similarities to to also right. the sorting um, thing here they are recording it that's a, more of a simulation they try to record what the human does how the bot should do that so so they um, train the the pro, uh, the movement um, of the human yes. to the robot with this and I found it very interesting because we've seen with the because in the video of course the the, the Tesla bot sorts things and um i found that very interesting to, to and, see and again this is part of the mm. way that they trained it and i think we have yeah. a better idea of how they trained it now there, there could be all sorts of sources you know people talk about yeah. simulation and everything else if you look at what he's wearing in his head that that's not like some vr setup they have mm -hmm. that's the actual camera from inside the head of optimus yeah it's the exact same camera setup if you look at that big heavy backpack, what the heck is that? Well, that's the FSD computer and everything else. Mm -hmm. So basically he has the entire Optimus setup. And so Optimus contains two parts, the, the vision system, which is looking at what's going on, and then the part that's able to manipulate. So you can think of those two systems. And, and if you remember the way uh, they're talking about it working now, the end to end, vision mm -hmm. in, joint encoders out. So what they're probably doing is that they are taking his his hand movements right there mm -hmm. and they're kind of going back through a computer and saying that okay taking what his fingers are doing and the position we have with the hand we are moving a virtual optimus right now so we are calculating what the encoder value should be if he was optimus yeah and now this is what optimus is going to be seeing so what mm -hmm. you're doing is you're training the vision to be of what it sees to what the joint output should be and yeah. there's a very good tweet out there everyone should look at from uh, Dr. Jim Fan that he goes through a bunch of these different steps where he tries to explain mm -hmm. it and says it's very similar to what uh, Google was doing with the RT1 paper that came out about a month ago, explaining mm -hmm. the tokenization of everything here. So you have like the vision in and it actually creates an output token, almost like what you see in a large language model that mm -hmm. allows the system to sort of understand what's going on. And that's what Tesla has been saying, vision in, joint values out. And now I kind of understand what the secret sauce is, is that yeah. his inputs are going to that virtual model and then being correlated with what that vision system is seeing. Yeah, so so this was the tweet right here. Um, is it that? 
Yes, one? exactly. That is that is a very good one. And yeah, um, you should go through it. And again, he's an outsider, but let's just say he's very knowledgeable in this field. And mm -hmm. he came up with some very good points. And there was like a point five in there that really crystallized things to me. So I, hopefully everyone in your audience understands what the whole idea of the transformer is. Um, and the idea of the transformer is, is a way of making any sort of uh, AI model, you know, mm -hmm. typically a large language model, sort of remember the context of a conversation that's going on. So it, it gives it a certain amount of sort of short-term memory to understand mm -hmm. uh, what we're talking about. And it used to be a problem that these, these language models would forget what they were talking about in the middle of a sentence. So you'd start a sentence and then by, you get to, uh -huh. by the time mm -hmm. you get to the end of it, it didn't remember what the subject of the sentence was because it mm -hmm. could not keep enough tokens in there. And the transformers was, was a way of, of uh, allowing you to keep attention to the things that are important. And I think that was referred to as uh, the famous paper, attention is all you need. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what's the important things? And he's trying to figure out, well, how do you use a transformer in this kind of situation where it's sort of video mm -hmm. in and out? And that is that you tokenize everything. And putting uh, yeah. the mm -hmm. above, yes, putting the above in there. And so it really comes down, the next frame from the table is fed back into the transformer. So it mm -hmm. knows the consequences of its action. Yeah, that's very that important. That is really actually. good. Because the whole idea yeah. is that when you're writing a sentence, the grammar and everything has to make sense with the words that kind of came before it. You can't complete the sentence without kind of knowing the stuff that came before it. Mm -hmm. Normally, when you're moving, like when the car is driving down the street, it doesn't care where it came from. It just cares about what's right in front of it. Yeah, exactly. So it almost yeah. has this amnesia of, you know, how did I even get here? It doesn't matter how <laughs> I got here. So you can kind of yeah. look at a path that way and say it doesn't matter. But in this case, it's a little bit different. We're saying, well, it may not be important where I was like half an hour ago, but where I was 10 seconds ago may be very important, especially when you're looking at doing a particular action. So in this case, it's like, I'm going for the blue block. And mm -hmm. so the focus and the attention is on the blue block and everything is sort of calculated to do it. But suddenly that blue block moves. Okay, what am I supposed to know, do now that the blue block moves? Well, if you don't remember that the whole goal of what you were doing was to pick up the blue block, you're just, you're not going to change. You're probably just going to go to where it originally was and then just suddenly discover, hey, it's not there right now. So this is the whole idea is for it to sort of understand the consequences mm -hmm. of its moves and to better understand the context of the situation. So here, yep. you know, we see it's very easy for, oh, in that case, it's doing the self-correction and made a mistake. But normally mm -hmm. it's just finding parts and picking them up uh, without, without any issue. Now, when a human comes in, starts to play um, mm -hmm. keep away, it has to now adapt and it adapts very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's really very nice in how it's able to kind of, and sometimes it goes to the new position that he pushed the block and others just says, no, nah, I'm not interested in that one. I'll go for the other, like it did right there. Yeah. It just decided this other green, you know, it doesn't matter the mm. order I put them in. The only thing is I need to get all the greens over there. Mm -hmm. And if you're making it hard for me to get one green, I'll go for the one that's easier.